Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our panel. Welcome to our live audience to this Schneps Media webinar, The Ins and Outs of Living in Northern New Jersey. This is being recorded so you can watch it over again and share it with your community, friends, family, and neighbors. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Although we can't hear or see your voice, audience, we would love to hear from you. So please feel free to ask questions using the chat or Q&A feature at the bottom of the Zoom screen, and we will save some time at the end to get to as many of your questions as possible. So hello and welcome to the Schneps Media webinar series. My name is Sky. I work with Schneps Media, the largest local media company in the New York metro area. We publish over 70 newspapers, magazines, webinars, and events throughout Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Bronx, Westchester, Long Island, and Philadelphia. This webinar is being recorded and can be accessed on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Schneps Media. Today's webinar is entitled The Ins and Outs of Living in Northern New Jersey. The goal of today's discussion is to introduce you to the Victoria Carter team here on the screen and learn what her team can offer to home buyers looking in the northern New Jersey area. She'll talk about, or the team will talk about the advantages of working with a team who knows the area best and the different communities as opposed to searching on your own. So I'll briefly introduce who we have here on the panel and then we'll have them explain further their experience and expertise. So first up is Victoria Carter. She is the broker sales associate with the Victoria Carter Group at Weikert Realtors. She manages a nationally ranked 16 person real estate group in Northern New Jersey that buys and sells homes along the Midtown Direct train line. Her team averages over 130 million in dollar volume from approximately 200 transactions annually. She's the number one agent in sales for Weikert Realtors company wide for four consecutive years. She's been a resident of New Jersey since 1994 and a professional in the real estate industry since 1998. And we have Cynthia Messina. She's the buyer's agent and listing specialist with the Victoria Carter Group at Weikert Realtors. She's been a real estate professional since 2005 and a member of the Victoria Carter team since 2009. She was raised in the Westfield and Summit areas and offers local expertise of the Milburn and Short Hills townships, Summit and Westfield. And we have Diane Malloy and Donna Arace. They're in the same Zoom box on the screen here. <laughs> so Diane is a buyer's agent with Victoria Carter Group at Weikert Realtors. She's now a native Maple Woodian, and she believes there's no better area than the Northern New Jersey to put down your roots. Diane's commitment to her community contributes to her deep understanding of the area and her professional marketing and development mixed with her educational background, her MBA from Columbia, brings the skills that will work for you. Then Donna Arace to her right on the screen is covers the Summit, New Providence, and Chatham areas. She's a buyer's agent and listing specialist with the Victoria Carter Group at Weikert Realtors. She was born in Maplewood, New Jersey, and grew up in Springfield, later moved to Milburn. She's married with three kids and has been a resident of New Providence for over 15 years with deep involvement in both the town and schools. She has a degree in marketing from the University of Tampa and was a corporate marketing specialist prior to her real estate career. And we have Shaleen Matani. She is the Senior Vice President of Mortgage Lending and a Producing Branch Manager at Guaranteed Rate. She lends in all 50 states while being highly competitive with financing options and rates for her clients. Guaranteed Rate is one of the top five retail mortgage lenders in the U.S. and maintains over 96% customer satisfaction. Previously, Shaleen was a retail sales manager at Bank of America and branch manager at private mortgage banking at Wells Fargo. So thank you. That's our esteemed panel on the screen, and they work together as a team. And, and thank you so much for joining us this morning and to our live audience for tuning in. And again, Live audience, if you have any questions that surface during the course of this conversation, you can use the chat and Q&A function to type in your questions and I'll pose them to our panel at the end of this discussion. So let's kick off the webinar with you, Victoria Carter, and maybe you can paint a picture of the 2021 real estate trends that you're seeing relative to last year and the year before 
And what are your thoughts on the 2022 housing market? So Sky, thanks so much for the introduction and welcome everyone to join, for joining us today. I, I actually have been in your shoes before 28 years ago. I made the choice to migrate from Brooklyn via Staten Island to Maplewood. And it was with kicking and screaming, I have to admit. But at the end of it all, 28 years later, two boys raised and a family and, and a whole bunch of new friends and, new, and a great new business. I've never looked back. So it was the best decision we ever made. And we're hoping that we can help you make that same decision. The Victoria Carter Group has helped over 5,000 families find their dream home. There's lots to navigate through. It's overwhelming, it can be daunting, but we're hoping that with our connections and our help and guidance and our transparency, we'll be able to guide you accordingly. The real estate market is a, is, is a, is a topic that everyone loves to talk about. Everyone is talking about real estate, where it's going, why it's going, how it's going, and they make no, make, make, make no bones about it. The market over the last 18 months in real estate in the Northern part of New Jersey has been on fire. There's been a tremendous appreciation of home values, anywhere between 10 and 20% in each of the in each of the individual towns. It's been very tough and very competitive for buyers, and it can be overwhelming. However, the good news is, is that the second quarter, actually the second half of 2021, is much more in line with the second half of 2019 as it relates to real estate market and trends. The market is stabilizing, interest rates are holding, inventory is beginning to build. The pendulum has begun to swing much more in favor of the buyer. And our expectation is that the that 2022 will, re, will remain equally as strong. The big difference for each of you to consider in making a decision to make up to kind of either cycle into the market initially or to come back in if you were sidelined because of the competitiveness that existed last year is to consider the fact that interest rates are going to be beginning to creep up. So you're in, a, you're in an environment where interest rates are climbing, home values continue to move up, maybe not as, and not as dramatically as they have been in the last 12 months, but they continue to move in a positive direction. So whatever you are looking at today will cost you more next month and next year. So if there's ever a time to move into the real estate market, honestly, it's right now. There's opportunity mm -hmm. to be had before the spring market, which starts in February and March of next year, which is typically our strongest season. So there's an opportunity right now between the fall of 2021 and the beginning of 2022 to decide to make a move. So that's kind of where we are and that's our recommendation to you. And thank you, Sky. Yeah, of course. Now, um, Diane, do you still see a migration from New York City to the Northern New Jersey suburbs? And what are some of the qualities families are looking for in a community when they decide to move to New Jersey? Uh, welcome everyone. And uh, yes, definitely there is uh, a migration to our communities. Um, Maplewood has even been dubbed uh, Book of West, in fact. So um, I have seen lots of young families come out, take a look around and decide, yes, this is the right fit for them. I would encourage everyone to do that. Zillow is great. You can look at as many homes as you want, but until you come out and look around, you're really not going to get an idea of what it's all about. So what we have seen is that there's a cultural shift happening. People who thought maybe they'd move to the suburbs in a year or two are now saying, well, interest rates are low. I don't have to work. I don't have to go into the, you know, the city every day now. I'm on a flex schedule. Let me, you know, let me take a look. So there's the timetable has changed. People are now more aggressively thinking about making the move. I lived in Manhattan. When I decided to come out to New Jersey, I couldn't sleep at night, it was too quiet. But I have to tell you, you get, it, you get used to that. It's a great trade-off. My children went through the local school systems and they have friends from elementary school still. And I have their parents as friends. So, you know, you get used to it. I have to say that the towns that we're talking about now, it's kind of like an, an urban life with a suburban feel. You know, so you have, a, they're culturally rich and diverse communities. So you'll be able to find your niche. Uh, there's a very strong sense of community in all of the towns we're talking about. I specifically am in Montclair, South Orange and Maplewood. But I have to tell you recently, my clients 
started in Westfield and ended up, we looked at two other towns and we ended up in another community entirely. So I'm willing to look with you. We all are willing to look with you wherever it takes us. Um, the other thing is I, I need to stress is that we're on Midtown Direct. So you're not really too far from the city. You can get into Manhattan from Maplewood, South Orange, Montclair in 30 to 40 minutes. And you're, it's, we're 15 miles away. So people come in and out all the time. It's not a big deal. Um, around here, uh, we're surrounded by the South Mountain Reservation where you can hike, you can bike, and there's dog parks. I mean, it's not, you know, it, 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 you're not isolated. You're, you're coming to a community where you can put down roots with your family and you can join a garage band, you can plant in the community garden. I mean, there's lots to do. There's things happening all the time. And I would just encourage everyone to uh, come out and take a look. Thanks, Beth. Now, yeah, of course. So is Northern New Jersey affordable, Donna? Can you give some insights into the different towns and housing options in, in the communities that you're speaking about? Yes, yes. Northern New Jersey is definitely affordable. I think people are a little gun shy at first and think, oh my goodness, how am I going to afford, you know, to move out of the city? However, if you, you know, what the, what the rents are in the city, when you come out to the suburbs and you see what you can get, and you something, it's, it's very surprising to many. Um, and there's a house for everybody, no matter what your budget is, that there's a house for you. Um, whether you want to be a little more like in the Maplewood area, like mm -hmm. Diane had said, a little more urban, and you go a little bit further out and get a more for your property, I mean, for your money, larger lots. Um, you can, all the towns, you can, you have great, vibrant downtowns, whether it be restaurants and, and salons or, you know, whatever, food shopping, everything is right there. Um, you're not in one community. These get a lot are, more closet space. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of closet <laughs> These space. towns are all on top right. of each other. Okay. So, you know, you may be living in Maplewood, but you're going to dinner in, in Montclair, Montclair and, and your, your kids are taking, you know, gymnastic classes in, in Maplewood or, or, or dancing classes or, or whatever it is. Like, it's really nice. The community feel is really, really Shopping strong. in downtown Summit is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's yes. your short ride from, from mm -hmm. all of these communities. Yep. Very accessible. Everything is very accessible. But for people who feel that it's overwhelming to choose between these different towns, Cynthia, maybe you could walk us through some of the ways potential home buyers can go about comparing and evaluating the different communities along the Midtown Direct train line and maybe some of the milestones in buying a home, like where to begin. Yes. So when I think about the different milestones that are involved in buying real estate, uh, there are many a number that come to mind. Um, the first one though, and, and really to me, the most important one uh, is really aligning yourself with a realtor who you feel you can trust, uh, whose advice resonates with you and who can be someone who is your ally. Um, someone you feel comfortable talking to, someone who, who really gets you and what you're looking for. Um, it, in terms of buying a home and, and where you want to be, what your lifestyle is. There are so many things involved in buying a home. Um, again, the most important thing is to, is to find that realtor that you really have a connection with. Um, the next milestone I would say is also aligning yourself. So two very important people come into play, your realtor, number one, and then number two, the person who, who you end up using for lending purposes. Most of us take out a mortgage and, uh, we need to understand the, the you know the different fees and, and things that are associated with uh, taking out a mortgage. And so usually a recommendation comes from your realtor, um, the realtor that you trust. So then it only makes sense that you would trust the lender that you're using as well. Uh, you know, once you do do the exploring and you find a home that you love, uh, you then want to make you want to put an offer on a house. So you're going to need guidance. Again, this falls back to f having that right person next to you because you're going to need guidance uh, to know how to write up an offer, what you should offer. There are all kinds of questions um, and, and just uh, things that come into play that your realtor is going to help you with. Uh, you know, so you make an offer and then you have to move toward getting to closing. Well, there's a whole... Uh, there's a whole litany of things that need to happen in order to even make it to the closing. 
And your realtor is going to be the one to help you with the guidance on that and sort of hold your hand and make sure you're comfortable um, and happy ultimately with your purchase decision. And then you get to closing and it's it's one of the best days you're ever going to have. It's 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 super emotional and uh, it's just it's a wonderful, wonderful day to get the keys to your new home and you know bring yourselves there and think about starting, uh, you know, making memories um, and just being happy and smiling. And it's it's something that you do the experience you share uh, with your realtor. It's just such an important one. Uh, so that those are really some of the milestones, uh, the way that your realtor helps you. Again, they, they do help you explore different towns. They give you options. Um, they should give you options. They should, when you come out, go to a coffee shop, go grab something for lunch together, sit down, talk, um, you know, get the vibe for the, for the town and go look at a few houses to see how you feel there. Uh, it, because that's really going to help you ultimately make the decision that's right for you and your family. And is that the best way to compare and evaluate the different communities is really just being part of them? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. And it's important to love where you live and like who you work with. I think that's really important. That's an important message. And a lot in, in researching the places where you want to live, community first, housing second because where do you want to be where do you want to live if you have a family where do you want to raise them the culture and the lifestyle that each of these communities offer is unique to each individual town not one is better than the other it's just that they're unique and different and every person you know i feel like buying a house is like a romance it's very organic you know almost immediately when you meet someone if they if they connect with you the same thing with the house and so you have to give yourself the opportunity to explore different towns, different communities, and, and weigh the factors that go into home to my home purchasing decisions accordingly. Commutability, education, affordability, parks, land, so on and so forth. And, and the right house will come along if you just give yourself the chance to explore. So Cynthia, you reference the financial, oh, I hear a little bit of feedbacks. Um, Cynthia, you referenced the financial aspect. So let's ask Shaleen, can you explain the steps in getting a mortgage pre-approval? Where does that begin in the process? Right. So the, the pre-approval process, you know, you heard from Cynthia, you heard from Diane, Donna, and Victoria that the process can be daunting. Uh, but the reality of it is that the pre-approval process simplifies the financial aspect process. So it is done right at the get-go. When you meet your realtor, when you when you talk to the Victoria Carter team, simultaneously you'll be doing the pre-approval process. So what is a pre-approval? The pre-approval actually makes an unknown into the known. So if you think about finance, uh, as Cynthia mentioned, a lot of us do need a mortgage when we purchase a home. You need to have your mortgage in place and your financing in place before you go out and look at homes. The beauty about the pre-approval process is that the credit report that I pull is one report that lasts you for 90 days and typically lasts you the whole cycle. And there is a misnomer in the marketplace. You know, you need to have, there are myths in the marketplace in terms of a home buying process that you need 20% down. You need to have perfect credit. Those are all myths. We have amazing financing options where you can put 5% down. Uh, you know, you are able to, to borrow when you don't have credit. You are able to borrow when you have student loan debt. You know, when this is your first time home, a lot of times you will have student loan debt. It is a norm. It is a norm for, for our generation. So what happens is the pre-approval process makes this whole unknown into a known process. It gives you what your max buying power is. It, uh, you know, we evaluate your income docs, your asset docs, your down payment. Most importantly, I go over the closing cost and what you need to be prepared with to get to the closing table. Now, when you're looking at closing costs, the beauty about buying in New Jersey, our closing costs are by far lower than buying in New York. So that's something that you will see when you look at, you know, when you're looking at a down payment with closing costs, how significantly the cost of entry and buying in New Jersey is less than if you were to purchase a condo in New York City. You know, so 
Uh, and also the pre-approval process gives you the maximum you can afford. And then also I review what your comfort level is. So sometimes your buying power falls in the middle of those two categories because you might think you can't afford something, but by going a little bit higher in price, you get that much more house. And then you know you have an idea of where current interest rates are. Victoria alluded uh, earlier on that when interest rates start rising, and you're starting to see a trend line when interest rates start rising, you will see your buying power pull back. Um, the good thing about the pre-approval pre process does give you what your buying power is currently with the current rates and what if rates change a little bit. You know, so it makes it fully transparent to you. Then what happens is I've worked with the Victoria Carter team for over 16 years, highly re I reputed in the, in the market. You know, a lot of the realtors in the market know who I am. So when I put my name on your pre-approval letter, they know that we validated your income docs, your asset docs, and it puts you in the best light possible to negotiate on that home. But the reality of the pre-approval process, it starts on right at the beginning. And the goal is to be your partner along with your realtor all the way to the finish line. Thank you, Shaleen. And I want to reiterate to our live audience, you will be receiving the contact information for everyone on the screen, all these ladies. So if you're interested, they can reach out to you, you can reach out to them. And also, if you have any questions about anything that's said today, please feel free to use the chat and Q&A function at the bottom of the screen, and I'll pose your questions to our panel. Um, so Victoria, let's go back to you. Can you explain the value proposition around living in New Jersey along this Midtown Direct train line? Certainly. I think it's important to consider that one of our biggest challenges in assisting everyone with buying a home is aligning expectations and budgets. Very often expectations are high and budgets are low. And part of the learning process and the exploration process of working with a very well organized and well-educated realtor is to explore the different opportunities and align them so that your expectations may come down a bit, your budget may go up a little bit to the point where you're finally comfortable with where you're going. Each of the towns that we service along the Midtown Direct train line, which is from Montclair to Chatham, Westfield to Basking Ridge, each, each community offers a different price point to value ratio. And part of the exploration process is understanding what your money will buy in each of these different communities. So once you have your pre-approval and once you feel comfortable with what the monthly outlay will be, it doesn't matter what you can afford. It, it, mostly, it only matters what you're comfortable with. And once you've determined what that monthly outlay can be and should be, or you want it to be, then you can start researching the different home value, the different home styles and opportunities in each of these communities and decide, you know, do you want to pay a little bit more for less house because there's a little bit more of a focus on the, the school rankings on any particular town, or would you prefer, or do you need more land than a more dense community? And so you wanna go someplace a little bit further west where taxes may be a little bit lower, but the commute is gonna be a little bit longer, but you'll have more land. It's all a very individual kind of decision as to how you, how you want to proceed. And I think part of that process is learning what the different communities offer, staying within a certain radius. I always tell my clients, pick a, pick a radius. Do you wanna be within one hour from New York City? Then let's look at all the towns that are within that one hour radius. You may not get everything on your list, but make a top list of five things you're looking for in descending order. And let's focus on getting those five lists of five items so that we can check off those boxes. And I think at the end of the day, the right house will come along in the right community because as long as you have studied and learned and understood what, what you're looking for, it's going to make the process that much easier. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to buying versus renting, if, if you have clients that come to you with that question in their mind, is now a good time to buy or to rent? Shalene, are you able to provide the benefit, like speak to the benefits, um, financial and otherwise, of buying versus renting? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as I spoke you just earlier, you don't have to put 20% down to buy a home. You could put 5% down to buy a home. But the, when you buy a home versus rent, there are so many benefits that come from buying a home. The first and foremost is the government subsidizes home buying purchase, right? So when you buy a home, you get a mortgage interest deduction and you get a property tax deduction. 
those are two deductions that you take you get essentially your take home goes up higher every single month just because you're buying a home and it helps subsidize those mortgage payments that's number one number two you build equity every single month when you make that mortgage payment you're building equity you're putting money in the bank number three you benefit from property appreciation just to, to give you the norm on stats in, in New Jersey, in the last few years, New Jersey has uh, appreciated between 3 to 7% annually. That's been the norm. And Victoria can actually speak to you a little bit more about that. Mm-hmm. Buying a home creates generational wealth. You know, as you build equity and you're building your first home and you're buying a home, a lot of people get the confidence to buy multiple properties after that. So it gives you the confidence to keep on growing your real estate wealth. It builds financial security. You know, nothing like having a roof over your head and paying down that mortgage every single month. You know, you, you retire with wealth when you just own one home. You can also own, uh, own a home with a lower mortgage payment than you're paying on rent right now. We are seeing rent skyrocket, right? With, just because of the demand and rentals you're seeing rental payments ranging between 3000 to 4000 for a one bedroom in New York City or in Brooklyn. You can buy a home and actually have a mortgage payment that's lower than that with the current interest rates. So really a great time to buy, really a great time with interest rates to, to help you keep, keep your payments low. So there's no reason to explore buying a home right now. Hmm. Victoria, did you want to elaborate on that? I totally agree with everything that Shalene has just said. I think there isn't a better time to cycle back into the market or cycle into the market than right now. You know, I think there are opportunities. There are so many different types of homes in different communities, only 15 minutes from 15 miles from New York City and from Brooklyn. There's been a lot of migration. So it feels very much like a very kind of urban environment, the cultural inclusiveness and the um, the the, uh, the sense of community is very strong. So I definitely feel that this is an opportunity. I definitely see the market continuing to be strong, but with the right guidance and with the right education and with the right aligning alliance with a realtor and a, and a strong mortgage person, it's a, it, the, it is very achievable. It doesn't have to be as overwhelming and as daunting as some people think it may be, it can be much easier. We as a team are one-stop shopping. We start with you know, helping you with the buying process, but we are also, um, you know, we have all types of resources available besides our, our Shalene who does our finance. We have a slew of recommendations for home inspectors, attorneys, contractors, you name it, we have it. So you're not gonna be in this by yourself, but you'll be in it with a partner from beginning to end. We really keep our, our relationships with our clients are for life. It's not really transactional as much as it is because real estate is so personal and because you depend on the relationship building that you have, we're with you forever. Um, And that's the most important thing to remember. You're not doing this on your own. And earlier we talked about the different communities that your team covers. Um, Cynthia, you walked through some of those, those neighborhoods. Maybe could you speak to some of the highly rated school systems in Northern New Jersey? I know that's a draw when people are looking to buy a house. Absolutely. Uh, so I was born and raised here my entire life and I've gone through the school systems and I now have a nine-year-old daughter. We've been in Milburn Township. Well, I've been in Milburn Township since about 2008. Uh, And in selling homes to people who have children and also having my own, I've come to know the various uh, town school systems quite well. And one of the things I have to say for where we currently are in Milburn Township is that no matter where your child might fit um, on the spectrum of, of, you know, liking theater or liking science or coding or uh, whatever it might be, they have something for everyone and, and however they teach the children, they teach them really well. Um, and so I'll speak from my own experience, my own honest experience. My daughter needed help with reading. Uh, in first grade, it started and she was able to be pulled out of her classroom and given some extra help with reading. And that helped her get the one-on-one that she needed. 
Uh, even though the classrooms aren't really that big, there there's still 20 kids in a classroom, and sometimes that could be a little overwhelming for the little ones. But they're able to make it so that it's not so overwhelming that the children can't progress. They're able to make it so that they can progress and move forward by giving them a little bit more individualized attention. And on the flip side, if if you don't need any type of help and and uh, you know you find that maybe what you are reading is boring because you're so so advanced in in that particular area. Um, they're able to also give you more and, and challenge you a little bit more. So it's it's a very challenging environment, yet it's also nurturing. And one of uh, one of my daughter's teachers actually lives in Summit, and her daughter goes to Summit School Systems. So we were able to sort of trade notes uh, while my daughter was in first grade, and she absolutely loves the Summit School System as well. And again, I have friends all throughout these different towns, and they all they all offer just about the same um, in terms of being able to challenge your child and also help your child should they need it. I wanted to just add that it's important to note that New Jersey in general has school a school system which is in the top 5% of the country nationwide. So it's a very strong school system regardless of which town you live in. In addition to the public school system that is available, there are a network of private and parochial schools if you choose to send your children to um, the, a private school in lieu of public. But the good news is that when you're looking at property taxes, which sometimes can be a little bit overwhelming, you're in lieu, instead of spending that money on private school, you can take advantage of the public school opportunities and know that your children are getting the best education possible. Right, and I will just add that sometimes people have compared the Milburn Township School District and Summit as well to that of what you may receive at a private $40,000 a year school that that that's here. So the taxes that you do pay here are well worth it. Yeah. And I, I would just like to add to that at the um, South Orange Maplewood school system. If when you go to freshman orientation day at Columbia, Columbia High School, it's like going to a small university. There are so many opportunities for kids, um, extracurricular sports, um, special language, I mean, all kinds of things. So it, it, it's, it's amazing that a public school can offer some of, some of what they do offer. So, you know, a lot of it, it has to do with who your child is and how they fit, um, but there is always room for guidance at the, you know, at the elementary level, middle school and high school level. And if you're without children at the moment and thinking about them, there are so many preschool options in, right. in all of the towns we're talking about. It's, exactly. You have a lot of choice. Right. I like, I like to say also that New Jersey school system ranks high nationally. So all these communities that we're talking about all have wonderful, wonderful school systems. And you can't go wrong in any of them, no matter what you're looking for for your child, advanced, not advanced, that there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. To have an excellent education. Good to know. And again, if the audience has any questions about any of these topics, please use the chat or Q&A function and we'll answer your questions. Um, but in this vein of, of these northern New Jersey towns and the schools, maybe Donna and Diane, can you discuss the different commuting options into New York City? Are you still seeing that it's important to home buyers to be able to commute into the city um, using Midtown Direct or other services like the Jitney? Uh, yeah, there's a huge commuting population, uh, even just to go in for dinner, meet friends. I mean, it's just people coming in and out all the time. The Jitney service is unique to uh, Maplewood, South Orange, and also West Orange, which is a neighboring community to South Orange, which we don't speak about that much. But it actually, there's several routes that the Jitney follows, and it actually picks people up close to their homes and takes them to the train station. So although there's parking and and all of these, um, at all these stations, you don't have to. You can ride your bike to the station and park, or you can hop on the Jitney and go to the train station. So it's just a plus. It's just another plus, and I think it's a dollar maybe uh, to get on the Jitney, um, or you can buy a pass. But it's it makes commuting a little bit easier. Um, in Montclair, uh, there is parking near the train station. You have lots of options. Uh, for train stations in Montclair. So you can go to Upper Montclair, you can go to Montclair State, State um, Station, 
I think I faded out. Oh, there you go. Um, and then, um, or, or you can go to downtown Montclair. I mean, there's lots of options as far as train stations. And there is also a direct bus that goes from West Orange into the city. Um, so busing is also a very right. easy option. So Summit is, is the hub, you know, for the Midtown Direct. So there's many, many train um, trains offered, especially in the morning with the early commute. So for Berkeley Heights and New Providence and Chatham, they all have their own trains. You can park there and walk to the train depending how close you are, or you can actually drive ride, five minute ride to Summit and you can, there's plenty of parking, the parking garage for non-residents and you can just hop on a train there. There's also an app that's called Boxcar app, which a lot of, a lot of the commuters use as well in the surrounding towns. And it's businesses that rent out a space um, that they're close, to the, they're close to the train station. So they rent out a parking space daily. So, you know, sometimes you're in the city now and you're not every day. So random, all of a sudden you're going in tomorrow, I'm gonna go on the Boxcar app, I'm gonna see if there's a spot available and they're always available. And a lot of the um, commuters love that. Oh, that's a great perk. Yeah. Um, um, is there anything that we didn't cover that you wanted to elaborate on um, on any of these topics? Otherwise we'll go to some questions. Well, I just want to wrap up by saying, Sky, that I couldn't imagine living anywhere else than in the northern part of New Jersey. I, I, I didn't know until I moved here how wonderful a place it is to live and to raise a family and to settle down. The beauty of it is, is that you're so close to all these other communities so that no matter where you live along the Midtown Direct Line, you're five to seven minutes away from any place you want to be whether it be a restaurant, whether it be a retail shop, whether it's the Short Hills Mall, whether it's the, the Newark Airport, you're 55 minutes from the Jersey Shore, you're you know, a 35 minute drive into an, and you're in New York City or over the Veranzano in 20 minutes. So it really, really is comforting to know that although you are in a more urban, you're in a more suburban setting, you definitely have the benefits of a more urban feel because you're not isolated, you're not remote, you're close to everything. The process can be overwhelming, but we are here to help you make it work. We have a book that is available to anyone who is part, who is participating today. It's 12 Easy Steps to Home Buying in New Jersey. I'm happy to send it to anyone who is participating today. If you're interested, it's like it's 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 12 steps to buying a house and it takes the mystery out of the process. So let us know by re, by emailing us your name and contact information and we'll be happy to send it. And, and and provide you with that resource. Yep, everyone gets a book. A free... Everyone gets a book. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah, that's great. I know you couldn't see it that well, but I have a picture of it and it'll go up um, in this recording, this this book that Victoria wrote, The Ultimate Home Buyer's Guide, 12 Steps to Finding Your Next Home. So um, you can learn from that book and you have, still have time to ask some questions. This is a, a fun question from Nina from our live audience. She said, I'm interested in moving to New Jersey, but my husband wants to move to Westchester. Can you each talk about your favorite community in New Jersey and why? <laughs> Let me ask this. Why does he want to move to Westchester? <laughs> um, um, well, you know, I chose Maplewood and I feel like it, it's, a small town with a bigger town feel, you can do, there's just lots of ways to connect to Maplewood with friends, with family, from your kids have a, have a great life in Maplewood. And so that's kind of, I mean, I'm prejudiced. That's where I live right now. And that's mm -hmm. when my kids grow up. Um, and I also, as I mentioned, lived in Manhattan. And so it was, an easy choice for me to come here because I could get back and forth very easily. So that's my vote, come out and look. So I agree with Diane wholeheartedly. We've lived in Maplewood and South Orange for the last 28 years, but as a realtor and as a real estate professional, Westchester is my really best friend. <laughs> right, the value to price point, rate, price point to value ratios in Westchester are very inflated. You'll take whatever budget you have and show him whatever properties that he's looking at at that price point and then come to New Jersey and you'll get double. You'll get better. You'll get more improved. Taxes will be probably a little higher in Westchester than they are in New Jersey, if you can imagine. And as beautiful as the river towns are, 
And I love to go up there and have dinner and shop and spend some leisurely time. At the end of the day, the access to Manhattan and all of the things we just spoke about is much more prevalent in this part of New Jersey than it is in Westchester. And you won't be, you won't be sacrificing any of the sense of community at all by living in New Jersey. I will add something to what Victoria just said. Uh, so Mina, maybe you can ask your husband to give me a call and I'll show him what the closing costs look like in Westchester. And that's the fastest way for him to see why New Jersey is better. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Okay. Anyone else wanted to chime in on that question or we'll go to the next one. I mean, I, I can chime in if you like. I, I live in New Providence. Um, I've been there for about 16 years, raising three daughters who are in college, one already graduated from college. And I chose to go a little more out west, they say, um, even though it's really, you know, I don't know, 10 minutes from Maplewood. Yeah, I mean, there, all so these fun. towns are on top of each other. And I chose to go out there. I want a little, a little bigger home. I want a little more property. And I want great school systems and also easy access to the city and a small community feel. And, and that's what I got there. Okay. Now, this next question comes from an anonymous attendee. She asks, would you recommend Northern New Jersey for a single woman? If so, which towns? Is there life for a person without children? And what are the advantages if this person works in Manhattan? Are there townhouses or small homes available? I, I would say Montclair. Montclair has a vibrant downtown area. There's things going, the town doesn't close up at 11 o'clock. There's mm -hmm. places to go for, there's coffee shops, there's shopping, there's activity on the weekend. Yes, oh uh, nightlife, yeah. Uh, small homes, oh, small homes, I, I don't know. That's I think there's plenty of opportunity for housing stock. There's tons of townhouses and condos and small single family homes. There's definitely an opportunity and a life to be had for single people um, in, in this part of New Jersey. It's, that's what makes it so special because it's a really mixed bag of all different familial structures, families, singles, couples, it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. There's opportunity for socialization, for meeting people, for going out, for feeling like you're part of a community, regardless of what your status is as, 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 as an individual or as, as with somebody or with a partner. So I love Montclair as an opportunity. I love Maplewood and South Orange. Any of these communities, even Summit, which has a very vibrant downtown, would be a great place for you to be or consider because there are there are museums, there are organizations, there are groups, there are activities, there's the South Mountain Reservation where people go hiking. There's nothing but groups or people to engage with to keep yourself very busy and very fulfilled socially. And Summit has townhomes right in town. Yes, Summit yes. is a good mm -hmm. choice. Would be and so does Montclair, by the way. Yeah. And so does Maplewood and South Orange. There's some great places to, to, to consider. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Any other questions from our audience? As we wait, people seem a little shy. As we wait, as more questions come in, does anyone on the panel want to talk about any other topic maybe that we didn't touch on that you think would be informative for our audience? I, I think what's a really good idea, and I always say to my clients in the very beginning when they're, sometimes they feel like they're all over the map, is once they get pre-approved and they speak to Shaleen and they feel more comfortable with the price point, um, with the purchase price, like Victoria had said, where you're comfortable, not what you can necessarily be approved sure. for, but what you're comfortable with, I always say pick like three, four homes in each of these towns and let's go to each town and take a look. It is a feeling. It's a connection, you know, it's emotional. Um, and, and then go out for lunch in those towns or go to the parks, take a walk downtown. And then you really narrow it right down where you feel yourself, you know, starting your next chapter. Mm -hmm. You have to educate yourself. That's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. And I think that's really a part of the whole process. There's many people who don't know this part of New Jersey who haven't been here, who are, you know, who have a tendency maybe to go to Long Island or to go to you know, Westchester, um, or to go to central or southern New Jersey, which all, all offer different attributes. But I think it's important to explore and come and visit and not feel, so, not feel like you don't know what's happening. And spending time, go to the parks, 
go for breakfast. Now that we are back to, you know, being able to go places, it's important to meet the people who live in that community. How do you connect with those people? How do you feel? Do you relate to them? Is it the right place for you to be? Do you feel comfortable walking around, looking at the housing stock, looking at the people who live there, looking at the opportunities? I mean, Maplewood has an amazing Halloween parade. They have an amazing 4th of July event. They have the circus. They have fireworks. They have movies in the park. They have a two-day Maplewood, Maplewood stock, which is a two-day ongoing jazz and music festival. These are these are sounds a little hokey, but at the end of the day, it's a tremendous thread that brings people together and makes you want to go and spend time in each of these communities. The parks are great. The, the, whether there's activities, organized activities or not, tennis, you know, hiking, biking, you're so close to the city, but yet you're so far away that you have the room to breathe. In today's market, particularly with the pandemic, people's housing needs have changed. What used to be a big enough apartment is no longer big enough, no longer big enough to accommodate working, no longer big enough to accommodate academics, no longer big enough to provide the outdoor personal space that you're looking for. So there's a generational shift and the pandemic accelerated it as people started to move out of the city. Even diehard city people who lived in apartments for their entire life have moved out of the city into more, you know, more communities out in this section. They can't go too far because that would make them crazy. They, but they go 30 minutes from Manhattan and that's just far enough to be close enough to the city, but far enough to be able to get the space that they're looking for. And I think that that's the trend that's gonna continue as people change the way they work. I don't think a lot of people are going back to work full time as they used to. I think there's gonna be a hybrid if nothing else. More and more people are working remotely. They love it, they want it. And I think that you'll see that housing, that being in a, in a space is going to be like a breath of fresh air. Okay, a few more questions from our live audience. How much house would $400,000 buy? Does anyone wanna answer that? I could. $400,000 is gonna buy you a house. It's gonna buy you probably a three bedroom, one bath, maybe one and a half bath house. Um, in towns like Bloomfield, towns like West Orange, towns like Springfield, there's plenty of opportunities to buy a house or a townhouse in that price range. If you are handy, you may even get more space for your money. If you're willing to do a little bit more work, a house that is completely done often sells at a premium. The closer you are to the train in each one of these towns, you often pay a premium. So if you're willing to be a little bit further from town, if you're willing to do a little bit more work, the housing size will increase. Okay, and what's the best area for a weekend or vacation home in Northern New Jersey? Weekend or vacation home? I, I would think down the shore. Jersey shore. I would think down the shore. Weekend yeah. or vacation home is, yeah. is down the shore. It's at the so, beach. Yeah, no, or, or by a lake. You know, New Jersey has some of the best lakes in the country. They have more lakes in New Jersey than I think any other state. <laughs> so there are wonderful lake communities that you can consider a vacation home that are close to the border of Pennsylvania, but still in New Jersey. Or you can certainly go down the shore where a lot of people have migrated over the last 18 months to buy a home for um, either full time or seasonally. Okay. And a final question here. Can you share resources to research school districts that you recommend to clients? I always tell my clients they should really go on each town has a website and I always direct them there at first, especially when they're all over the thing, when they're all over the place and they're looking from Maplewood to out to Long Hill Township, say, and Montclair, and then they're in Westfield and Springfield. I always say, check out their websites. There's a lot of information to be found there that is really helpful with the communities and the schools and the commute, what that town itself has to offer. Yeah, and I think it's important not to judge a school system by its mm -hmm. by its test scores, because I, I think that when you're considering these towns, you should speak to people who actually have their children in the school system themselves so you can get firsthand information, as opposed to uh, eliminating a town because the school on paper doesn't look as strong. Because, you know, school grades are linked to socioeconomic makeup, and many of these towns are very diverse, they're very culturally rich, and because of that, 
they may not have the strongest test scores on paper, but that doesn't mean that your child won't get the best education possible. And the opportunities exist. And I know Diane could speak to that further because she's a very big public school advocate um, and very knowledgeable with her children going through the school system. So I feel like, you know, that's a good way to talk to people about the school system is talk to people who have school children in the school system themselves. I always refer my clients to people who are in the school system, as Victoria said, whether it's the PTA or HSA co-presidents or whether it's a principal at a specific school, I always try and make that connection for them so that they can actually hear really what's happening in the building, in the school, not just what the website is telling them. Yeah. So, you know, once my clients get a little closer to making a decision on where they want to be, then the next step is to like, you know, hook them up with somebody that they can talk to. Okay, fantastic. We hope that we answered everyone's questions during this webinar. And if not, I'm going to share my screen now with the contact details of our panelists here, who will also be reaching out with a copy of Victoria Carter's number one best-selling book about buying a home in New Jersey. So everyone gets a copy of that book. Uh, thank you to our panel. On behalf of Schneps Media, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Schneps Media. That's where this webinar will live. And um, thank you again. Thanks to our panel. Thanks to our live audience for participating in this webinar, the ins and outs of living in Northern New Jersey. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thank Thanks you guys so much. And thank you to the audience for joining us today. Hope to see you soon. Don't be afraid to call us. Yeah, thank call. you. Okay, bye. Give us a call, reach out, we'll help. Bye. Bye-bye.